guys, this is Susan, and we've got a big surprise today, and that's what's next. All right, here I am with Vicki Teal. You're not gonna believe it, this is so exciting for me. And I wanna give you a little bit of a backstory with her before we start this interview, but we're gonna have an extensive interview here with Vicki Teal. First, I wanted to let you know that she is American born and the longest running uh, couturier in Paris. Female. Female couturier in Paris. She moved um, from New York to Paris. We'll, we'll get into that with the interview. And uh, she, had an, she has an established career there there for over 50 years, I'm 55, right? years. 55 years and she is the inventor or creator of the mini dress the wrap dress pretty woman dress that is so infamous um, with her brand we'll talk about how that got into Berdorf Goodman's and everything else and so without further ado let's just get right into it and here's Vicki Teal Thank Hi, you. nice to see you. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we're doing this. Yeah, I am sure. so glad you're so open to this. Yeah, just flew in awesome. from Paris, just for you. <laughs> yeah, that, that is, I, I'm, I'm to the moon. I wanted to, I, it's there's so much, your history, your, your, um, your past is, is so intense. I don't really know where to start, but I think before I start getting into the design things that I think my viewers are going to want to know, because we talked about mm -hmm. this, um, my channel is really geared to fashion designers people who want to be fashion designers, people who are already fashion designers, or who just want fashion, just love fashion in general, right? Mm -hmm. So before I even get into that nitty gritty and some of those hard questions that I sent you earlier, I want to kind of get the history. How did this happen? How in the world did you get from New York to Paris? Oh, I can actually start at Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm from Washington, D.C. in a very luxurious part called Chevy Chase. Um, I went to junior high and high, and I was a cheerleader in junior high and high, so I had a lot of power. When you're a cheerleader, you really do have a tremendous amount of power. Whatever you wear, the other kids are going to be right. copying it, when, not when you're wearing your cheer outfit. Right. I decided that it, my parents told me I couldn't have my own telephone in my bedroom, and I okay. said, that's not possible, and they said, no, we just don't think it's right, and I said, okay, I'll make my own money, and I went and started wow. at 12 sewing. And I bought a sewing machine, I got a sewing wow. machine, my dad got me that, uh -huh. and um, I made skirts. Now, everybody was wealthy in Chevy Chase, so I sold the skirts for $25 a skirt. Wow. They were, and wow. what I did was I made a circle skirt, okay. and then I had all my friends come over and they would cut out what their life was in felt and sew wow. it on. So we made the Vicky Felt wrap skirt, a circle skirt, uh -huh. and then we had the edge done with a little uh, little colored curl cues that you would sew on. Wow. And I would teach them how to sew. Okay. So at 12, I had plenty of money and I had my own telephone and all my own uh, clothes. And I actually uh, purchased a mink coat at wow. 16 with my Incredible. own money. Incredible. Yeah, a mink coat. Uh, wow. I had the mink on the inside and okay. beige cashmere on the outside. So I was a That's senior a cheerleader yeah. with a fur line, with a mink lined uh, cash beige cashmere coat. Yeah. Incredible. And then you went to Parsons? I went to fashion school in New York. And okay. in my high school yearbook, it said to Vicki uh, Teal, mm -hmm. uh, Vicki, uh, see you in Paris when you're at a couturier. Other people would write to Elizabeth Taylor Teal because whenever Elizabeth Taylor cut her hair, I had my hair copied to follow her hair do. Okay. So it's funny that I ended up partners with Elizabeth Taylor, but I adored right. her and ended up being in business with her. Okay, so you, you fast forward, you, you went to Parsons and you went on this uh, trip, some, some trip that you actually went to in Paris. Yes. And uh, I'll from there, I'll explain. Yeah. I went to Paris uh, to Parsons School of Design in New York mm -hmm. City. Having sewn from 12 years old on, um, yeah. you really learn a lot when you sew yourself. I recommend to everybody who wants to be in fashion get a sewing machine and yes. sew yourself. Uh, it doesn't take a long time to do anything to correct something, correct old dresses, and re remake them, yes. but it's a passion. Yes. And if you really want to be a fashion designer, learn to sew. Yes. So, I, with yes. all the money I made as a child, I went to Paris to Parsons Fashion School in Paris. Wow. We were 17 and we were taken over on a bus and wow. we were taken to the Paris Fashion School okay. and then driven around Europe for two months to see all of Europe. 
Okay. And actually, I left the fashion school and ran off with with a, a gorgeous German man. Okay. <laughs> in pursuit. Uh, yeah. Just fell just fell madly in love with this gorgeous Aww. German man. Learned another language, and he took me to an incredible place called Saint Tropez. Oh gosh. So I ended up yeah. in Saint Tropez, and uh, I got an F for the summer school, but I went back the following year at the summer school and <laughs> That's great. they finally gave me a good grade. Right. But uh, I had an insider view by, if you're going to Europe, it's yes. very good that you don't stick with your Americans and you go right. meet some Europeans Local. that will explain to you that what the desserts are, the breads are, the drinks are. People, um, I know that when I went to school for fashion design, when I really wanted to go into movie and, and actually create um, you know, costumes for mm -hmm. the movies. And I remember going to FIT and, and driving up there and they said, oh, don't bother because Edith Head is still alive. Mm -hmm. And, but you didn't, you Edith didn't let Head that was stop. my sponsor. Right. Yes. It's, I, it's, so I, so I, I went into couture instead, yes. enough about mm -hmm. me. That is just said because it's interesting, you went in there, you went for it anyways. I you have one important there. thing yep. to say, Nike said it, yeah. just do it. Just do it. Just do Don't it. Don't ever yep. stop anything. Just do Nothing it. Nothing yeah. ever stops me. Yeah. I'm, uh, I flew in last night at whatever it was, right. and I'm here in the morning, <laughs> right, and I'm, right. you just do it. You don't ever stop doing anything. If you want to succeed in life, right. you right. just do it. Yeah. So you did pursue that. I mean, you went to, um, in Paris, and then you were able to get hooked up with um, Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and you ended up with um, the your husband-to-be at mm -hmm. that point with mm -hmm. the makeup artist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so then how did you meet um, Woody Allen? How did you get into oh, films? How well, did you get into actual films? Okay, it's and very get interesting. Yeah. Um, because I sew, and I, rec I it's 12 years old I started sewing, mm -hmm. I went to fashion school in New York, Parsons, mm -hmm. and I had an apartment in the village. And um, mm -hmm. I had two rooms with stone walls, with brick walls. So I put nails up on the brick walls and I made clothes out of leather. I'm the first person to make leather with all French. I put French, yeah. cut it like that and put beads up it. Wow. And I made the French vest, the French mini skirt. Wow. The skirt was long, but I cut it up until it was mini. And then the fringe bag. Okay. I was six, 17, 18, and 19 okay. selling those in my apartment in the village while I went to fashion school. Okay. So okay. when I say just do it, you don't just become a student. If you're really interested in right. becoming a designer, you want to start as soon as you can sew. Right. And you continue. You don't ever stop. Right. So I made a lot of money in the village. And I went okay. to... It, it saved me, I put it in the bank, and then I went to Paris and I had lots of money. Okay, okay. And Woody yeah. was in the village appearing in a club across the street from where I also worked. Okay. I really like cute guys, and uh, in this cafe that uh, called the Cafe Wa on McDougal Street, there okay. was this gorgeous man in the window, uh, a big poster of him singing with a guitar. Okay. Bob Dylan, who was called Bobby Zimmerman, was his backup. Wow. And so they called me Peaches Latour, and I made them really cute outfits, and I passed the hat on Saturday and Sunday night when these guys were singing, okay. and I made even extra money okay. to, for, for my lifestyle, and I got to know the cute guys. Woody was across the street, and he was not that cute, but he <laughs> did come over and yeah. hang out, and um, everybody knew me as Peaches. Okay. When I got to Paris, I wanted to um, launch the miniskirt with my partner, Mia. We were best friends in fashion school when we went to Paris. Now, she had it up. Her dad was Irving Penn, her stepdad. Yes. So awesome. she had a wonderful connection in Paris, Dorian Lee. Yeah. And Dorian Lee threw a party at which she was marrying for the eighth time. And we got wow. to wear dresses of our creation to the party. And a couturier, Louis Ferro, saw our collection our creations and he wanted us to show and launch the mini in his July fashion show. So we got to Paris in May. In July we're wow. in the Haute Couture fashion having showing the mini. Amazing. Amazing. Woody yeah. has come to Paris and he was uh, saw us in a nightclub with okay. some movie producers and he was doing a movie called What's New Pussycat. Wow. They came over and he said, Peaches! And he said, could you do the costumes for Amazing. the movie What's New Pussycat? So my very first big job was a movie. A single nice. screen, we got a single screen credit. Mia said, I'll do the movie, but I want my name alone on the screen with Vicky. So costumes by Mia Fonsgreaves and Vicky Teal. Amazing. My first job. Wow. So starting that 
that early in your career to be able to do that and mixing it up. You have to that. create something special. Yes. A lot of designers are wearing other people's clothes. You know, okay. they're going to be wearing a Fendi or they're going to be wearing, you know, Gucci because they want to care show a Gucci label. No. Right. You wear your own clothes. Even if you're a boy, you wear right. your own clothes and you show up what yes. you're all about. Yes. No, I, I believe that. And I, and I tell people all the time, especially the students, that if you're not interested in the construction, you're not interested in the engineering part of it, then go into styling, go into mm -hmm. merchandising, mm -hmm. because design you have to understand how it's made. And how it's sewn. Right. A, a perfect example would be, I, my son gave me a book when he died of uh, Alexander McQueen. Oh, Alexander yes. McQueen was a tailor. He was amazing. A though. tailor in, yeah. in the men's world. Right. And his tailoring, his understanding of tailoring was obvious throughout his whole career. Right. So he made crazy clothes, but right. the, whatever he made that was crazy, mm -hmm. the, the construction of the core was constructed yes. by a tailor. Yes. I went to see the exhibit in mm -hmm. New York when he was at the Met, mm -hmm. and to see it that close, mm -hmm. and even see some of the leather pieces mm -hmm. that were molded mm -hmm. on the body. How he molded leather on the body is still beyond me. How he achieved that is You still, start sewing you know, at 12. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> I was eight when I started sewing. <laughs> so we've got that in, we've got that in yeah. common. It's a passion. Yeah. It's that a was passion. it. That's, that's what usually opens up mm -hmm. the world for a designer because then mm -hmm. you can see that you can master something mm -hmm. and then you can, that's when you can start to create. I, before I start getting into the nitty gritty of, gritty of it, can you describe your brand? How could you describe yes, your brand? Yes, very easily. Okay, sure. Timeless. Okay. Timeless. Okay. I want to never make anything you can't wear forever. Timeless, and it was taught to me by Coco Chanel. Okay. I'm one of the few people, and I talk about this when I sell my perfume on Home Shopping Network. Right. I'm one of the few people that got mm -hmm. actually to spend time with Coco Chanel. Oh, and she was my mentor. Amazing. And she blessed me. And I owe everything in the yeah. second part of my life, in my fashion career, to yes. having been blessed by Coco. Wow. Yes. And Coco did timeless fashion. Because it is an art form. I yes. do believe it's an art form. I treat it like an art form. I believe you do as well. So to be able to put that into the marketable area and the sales, um, that is the most difficult part, but that is the most important part. Because I think you don't realize that what you have is a gift. To be able to sell something, to be able to have something that is immediately become classic or immediately become um, sellable is actually a gift. There is no formula for it. You can look and understand certain mm -hmm. things and certain elements that are there. It, and I had that gift too. It's and called I was told the eye. It's the eye, but it's, it's the yes, eye. it's the eye. But it's also this intuitive thought that when you're creating it, that you know that yeah, that's going to sell. Mm -hmm. Like a, like a movie producer will say, I think this one's going to be a big mm -hmm. one. There's an intuitive feeling that you have as a creative person to know if something's going to sell. Mm -hmm. There is no formula, and the people who can really do it over and over again have a gift, and I believe that's what you have. Oh. So big, that, big time, big time, big yes. time. That's my main yes. my main forte is mm -hmm. that, and the other main forte is mm -hmm. my health. Yes, that is my own strength and my own health. Yes, so I'm never sick. I work all the time and I sleep and then I work and I work wow. Saturday, Sunday, I sleep five or six hours and then I work. Wow. Amazing. That's no, just Amazing. work work and is your is, is your goal. Right. And if you aren't that type of person, it's very hard for you to compete with someone like me who's going to be working and working and working and right. so if you're just a bit of a lazy mm, creator, blah, 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 don't don't do this. Don't compete with me. <laughs> or, or another Vicky in the next generation. Aww. You have strength. You have to have perfect health. If you're going to be uh, a movie star is a 10 to 15 to 20 year business. Mm -hmm. By the time you're 40 to 50, you're finished. A fashion mm -hmm. designer can go on until you drop dead. Right. And we have Paco Rabanne now, Paris still alive. We have Mr. Givenchy. Who's right, 98. Right. 98. Yeah. And Christian Dior. Christian Dior lived yeah. a very long life. Yeah. And, uh, and Madame Gray started Madame at 80. Madame Gray. <laughs> started, so yeah. we have people yeah. who've had very long careers. Right. And their secret is their health. Yes. Eating correctly, not drinking too much, not partying too much. Right. All you do is work. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to just work. You know, you have to be have a mindset to, to work. If we're talking to you're going to be students, right. people listening to me. Right. Ask my kids who never saw me. I just work. <laughs> right. And you and it's a very stressful career. It's a very fast-paced career. It's not stressful. 
To you and not no, at all. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, happiness is to me is uh, selling a dress. Happiness to me is seeing oh, a sure. woman look so fantastic and going, oh, oh my God, and it just gives her shivers, and then she passes that on to me. I'm helping someone have look her best. Right. Life right. to me, if you read my books, life yes. to me is only one thing, and this is yes. from Coco. Yeah. Life is and Elizabeth Taylor. Life is about helping other people. So yes. if you're constantly dressing women for the biggest day of their life, yes. and they come over to you, and now I'm 75, and they say, Vicki, you did my mother's dress, my grandmother's yes. wedding dress, my yes. mother. Yes, yes. How great is that? Right. So helping love, other people. Right. And, and you talk about that in your book, The Absolute Woman by Vicki Teal. And I love the, other, uh, the, the first book as well, because that talks more about the fun and, mm -hmm. and the life you had with um, you know, all the movie stars and the ins and outs of the movies itself. But this one is really, really fascinating to me. And in the very back, you get to the nitty gritty and you compare it to, um, to art. And why is it you know, different than art? And that's because of what I was trying to say is that because it is ever changing. It is moving faster than art. You mm -hmm. have to change. You have to have you know, some some. There's four five, seasons. Four, there's four, that if you're lucky, there's only four seasons. Yeah. I don't Waterfield, I think he had he had more because it was resort and and pre-resort. It was crazy mm -hmm. in my seasons. Actually, uh, I came up with a new plan for Bergdorf Goodman. Yeah. Yeah. I'll explain my Bergdorf. I want story. that story yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay. I want you to talk about Bergdorf for okay. sure. Um, yes. Yeah. But in 19. Uh, in 1968, I opened my shop with Elizabeth. Okay. We had, I had met her in the movie studio, okay. and um, I was doing What's New Pussycat, and she was doing Sandpiper. It was supposed okay. to be shot in California, okay. but Elizabeth wanted to eat French. So when she wants to eat a certain, line, a certain country, wow. they shoot yeah. the movie there so she can eat that way in studio, and then they shoot the <laughs> outdoors in California. Wow. She wants to eat Italian, they'll shoot the movie in Rome, so she's the biggest star. Right. We got to, uh, she saw my dress, me walking on the stage or walking around yeah. in the studio, and so she ordered uh, the dress that I was wearing, and I got to, uh, Richard ordered it for her as a surprise, yes. and uh, I got to befriend her, and then I got to meet her makeup man yes. at the restaurant in the studio, but okay. I met Elizabeth first, Okay. and he said, oh, you're the girl Mary, uh, making Elizabeth's clothes now. Here she's throwing everything out that's long, and I said, yes, she's going mini, and she went super mini yes. uh, in 1964. Yeah. So we ended up opening a shop, Elizabeth, Mia, and myself. Okay. Mia stayed only a few years, and she um, got very upset one day. We had the store... Uh, in there, and okay. she'd like to go home at four. I like to work until it closed. Sure. And yeah. she had been sculpting and drawing. She said, "I'm really an artist. My mother was an artist. I want to leave and be a sculptor." And I said, "That's a great idea." Okay. At, I like staying in the store and selling dresses. And she didn't want to stay in the store and sell dresses. Okay. She wanted to go home. Okay. So uh, I ended up having the store in uh, Paris, and then I ended up opening a store in London. Okay. And so I had two stores, London and Paris. We got okay. to dress all the rock and roll, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones wives. Yes. Uh, by the 1972, mm -hmm. a store came to me and wanted to open a boutique for me in New York called Henry Bendel. And okay. so I agreed. I opened a boutique in the second floor of Henry Bendel. Okay. And by 1982, Bergdorf Goodman came and said, would you leave Henry Bendel and we'd open a Mickey Teal store for wow. you in, Henry, in Bergdorf Goodman. Okay. They said, uh, I said, I don't have the wherewithal to make 30 dresses uh, a month. You need 30 dresses a month. Right. Um, they said, we will finance you. So Bergdorf became my bank. That's incredible. They pay, prepaid me. Wow. If you're good enough, that doesn't just happen ask now. For, only if you're good enough. <laughs> only if you're good enough, I guess. If you're good enough and you're wow. going to sell enough. But okay. I agreed to come to the store every okay. month okay. and they would have the women lined up one after the other. Okay. Seven or eight women in a row and I'd measure them all. I'd sketch their dress. Okay. And I'd make their dress. The idea that they're sketched, that they get to keep my sketch, yeah. that they're totally designed with, oh, I want to have a longer sleeve. No problem. Some designers say, I don't do that. Right. My sleeve stops here. Right. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make a longer sleeve. Right. So right. I made their custom dresses. So you had custom in the Bergdorf salon. I created that. Wow. The custom couture at Bergdorf. Awesome. Nobody had that before. No. But they know. prepaid me. Okay. Don't be afraid okay. to ever ask a store okay. for what you want. Don't be afraid okay. of the store. You say, you want me? 
you have to prepay the dresses and give me the loans or you become my bank. Okay. And they did, of course they did. So generally in Bergdorf's, you do own that section and it is your own I store. I didn't buy it. Right. They, no, but they gave it to me. Now right. there have been some designers who are super rich, marry really rich husbands. Right. And they say, I want to shop in Bergdorf, and Bergdorf charges them a hundred thousand, exactly. two hundred thousand for the space. Yes. Okay. But they maybe sell three dresses in the month. I'll right. sell eight dresses a day. Wow. It depends wow. on how commercial you are. Okay. Well, just in general, so that so the audience understands that the way Bergdorf is set up is not like Nordstrom's or like Saks, where they where they buy your garments and uh, they own it at that point, um, as, and they can do whatever they want to do with it. At this at this, you're actually housing the store that is Vicky Teal, yes. and you're keeping it housed, yes. and that is part of a store within a store. I'm a store within a store, and they, I yes. also came up with the idea, I called it the gap delivery. Okay. All of a sudden, the store, you have to keep your eyes out when you're in fashion. Sure. I'm in the malls, and I see the Gap every month has come to America, and I go to see the store, mall, the stores. Yes. Gap's got a new delivery every month. But we don't have that in Bergdorf. We didn't have that in, in the yeah. expensive stores. So I came up with, it, not four seasons a year, monthly new, the Gap Incredible. delivery for Bergdorf. Incredible. So every yeah. month, yes. all new things came in. If the okay. color orange was happening, in the summer, and it just happened, we're going to have every sewer we have in Paris making an orange something, and the whole delivery will be orange the right. following month. So that right. the month before, nobody knew, orange comes out, boom. You go walk into Bergdorf two weeks later, it's all orange. Yes. So yeah. this is a way for the monthly delivery, and now they, they will do that with certain people who were creator, creators like me. Okay. So there are parts of Bergdorf's where they do buy, that's the casual stuff. But There's the, everything. Right, all the right. stores will do that. Bergdorf right. and Neiman's are now one. They were okay. bought, Neiman's bought Bergdorf, and okay. they combined 20 years ago to be one. But all the men who ran the store, there was yes. a woman who ran the store first, Dawn Mello. Okay. They knew my feminist philosophy. I don't take money from men. All my money comes from selling dresses. Wow. I don't. I marry men that I feel that, that are gorgeous. Wow. <laughs> and I make the money. Wow! Wow! Well, I've done that way since I was 15 or 16. And that's something we all have to learn. Yes. We all have to, some of us, I have it in my book. It says boomers. it says no sex for shoes. <laughs> yeah. Some I of wanted to sell T-shirts on TV, but they haven't let me do that yet. No sex for shoes T-shirts, but that's my motto right. and the other motto I have and this is a very important motto if you are in the arts mm -hmm. even if you're not in the arts if you're just a, a, a bus driver okay. sure don't dance with crazies mm. in school all your life your children yes. everybody yes there's somebody mean that's going to say something mean to you that's going to do that's going to be in a car and cut you off right. your husband's going to wake up in a grumpy mood and be Right. grumpy and mean to you. And here's what Elizabeth Taylor taught me. You roll your eyes. Show me how you roll your I eyes. I love that. I love that. Roll Talk your eyes. Ask yes. him, show me how you roll your eyes. I'm not That's it. Perfect. I did it. Okay. Roll your eyes. Elizabeth, if the worst that would said to her, or the worst anything would everybody do, she just had this big Elizabeth Taylor eyes and she just rolled them. Yeah. And that she never answered anybody. She never got mad. Wow. She was always lovely. Wow. You just could not, you could not do anything to that woman and get her upset. Because she just rolled her eyes. She knew, how, just, to, she knew how to be centered. She knew how, yeah. Unbelievable. Woman. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, that, that's a strength, too, that I think that we all have. I mean, honestly, this book, I mean, I'm going to want you to sign it later. I want to <laughs> send this to, even to my daughter. Because yes, this is, this is something that is just... I mean, things that are so important, and you just talk about so many different avenues of it, just yeah. everything from, from the food to, um, to men, how to, how, you know, how to go about it, and, you know, it's just... I've had a lucky life, but yes. how many people get, become partners with the most famous woman at the world when they're 20? Right. To get to meet the right. most famous designer that ever lived when they're 30. Right. And have them both be close to you and mentor you and help you to understand how to be successful. Right. They both did like what I did. They liked my work and they liked my attitude. Right. And I was open and I, I got to meet them. I also got to meet many other great uh, women. Yeah. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. Yes. I dressed Oprah very, maybe 25 years ago. Right. Oprah Winfrey uh, really impressed me as a, as a, a fashion center. She would come into Bergdorf Goodman 
And I would be there and they'd say, oh, Oprah's coming today. She knew you were in. She wants to see what's the latest. Right. She would say hello to each salesperson. I'm very blessed as a young girl to my very first uh, client, practically, when I opened my shop in Paris. Yes. In 1968, it was a store with Elizabeth, made all the press, you know, Elizabeth Taylor, Vicky right. Teal, and me at Fonce Graves opened a shop. Sure. Bridget Bardot. Wow. We had cute stuff in the window, and we had a bathing suit like you could see on a mannequin. She comes in, Bridget Bardot. I mean, yes. she had, in my book I write, she started the, she started the sexual Children. revolution. Yes. yes. After Brigitte, everything was different. She comes into the shop and she says, I want this uh, swimsuit in window, I take this. I said, do you want to try it on? No, it's no need. I said, come on, you know, let's try it on. She throws her dress down, she had no nope, underwear. Nothing. Oh, nothing, totally. She wow. puts the bathing suit on, see, I knew it was good. Oh. And she goes, oh. I, I was just like, I afterwards I asked Mia, I said, did your mother, when she was a model in rent, she married a Frenchman? Yes, the French women don't wear underwear. On sleep. Right. They have them in the windows, in the in the lingerie shops. That's just for the window. That's <laughs> <laughs> for the walk around the house. But on the street, they don't wear underwear. Wow, wow. I mean, it's just a whole a whole nother world. Which is, when you had your shops there in in Paris, you also had an atelier. Mm -hmm. I would imagine, and you yes. had seamstresses, and you had tailors, yes. and you had had the whole nine yards. Um, you had that for many, many years? All my life. Okay. I still have my atelier. Wow. They're still wow. sewing. We're actually uh, mm -hmm. still sewing for a few sophisticated women that are just won't give up. Okay. And uh, I've been mm -hmm. re recently dressing the top society lady in New York, Jean Shafaroff. Okay. She has been wearing famous for wearing giant ball gowns, and okay. I actually made her the pretty woman okay. recently. And so, mm -hmm. though my atelier, this girls are still sewing, but having a retail store is not happening right now. The right. retail stores are, so I turned it into a pop-up business. Okay. And I people come and they take it over for a month or two and rent it and okay and they keep my perfumes in the back and wow yeah wow that's, a that's interesting pop up you have to always move with the times yes and now if you go on the internet and you put the button vicky teal yes you're going to see the clothes i made for television like this dress right sold for 70 dollars right we made 20,000 we sold 20,000 on a today special of this wrap dress wow in the four years or five four years we may have made 80,000. In my haute couture career of 50 some years, I don't think I made 80,000. Right. I made more dresses in four years in China, would they make these in yes. China, yes. than haute couture. But you're gonna push the button, Vicky Teal, and that's and what you're going to you're see. You're going to see right. two or three hundred dresses that you can buy right on the internet, and you're going to also see some of your past work, which is amazing. But and you I can buy it. Too. Yes, it's a, a yes. real real on first dibs. The yes. average price point is two to three thousand, seventeen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars right. for a used old dress. Right. That, then sold 30 years ago for $2,500. That's when you know, that's when you know <laughs> you've really made it. When these dresses are just, they're treasured like art pieces. Yes, they are. People do collect yes. them and there's some serious people that do collect them. Yes. And um, so that is, that is, you know, kudos, that is, that's amazing. We have to know also as artists, uh -huh. the world changes. Nothing right. stays the same. Right. We now have a whole new thing. We have. Uh, internet shopping. Right. We have television shopping. Right. Thirty percent of less clothes are sold in stores and boutiques, and thirty percent of the stores in the malls are closing. Right. In the streets of Paris and Madison Avenue, in New York. Right. Every store, every street has two shops closed. Right. I mean, and, and manufacturing is is disappeared literally over well for the last twenty years in New York, where I studied as well. So I think it's creeping back because there's another level that's going on, and that's when the higher level clothing and the couture clothing, but the mass and the mass market, um, it, it's it's over. It is basically you know in different countries, and it'll always be that way. And mm -hmm. how you're going to be able to attain it is going to always be probably online, or if there's a new invention mm -hmm. uh, after that. I can tell but, you the new invention. Okay, tell me. Okay, tell me. <laughs> um, the new invention is going to be um, you have your dressing room. I was working with a Chinese mm, company. I think I know show. Where you know, wow. where I know where it's going. in my book. You go wow. into your dressing room in your home. You have a wall that's yeah. a certain material. Right. You talk to the wall and you say, I want to have a long red 
dress. Right. But I want it to be low in the back and high in the neck. A machine from your brain puts the design on the wall yeah. and you say, and it, you, then you, it puts it on you. Yes. There's a photo of you that comes up on the wall and it's called your uh, avatar. avatar. Right. And yeah. it sort of moves around like that mm -hmm. and then the dress goes on it and you say yes and then the dress goes on you and you stand like that and the machine puts it on you. That's the future. There were these master uh, designers for making prints, and there were the ultimate of the ultimate, and Abraham was by, one of them. By having the um, colors. The copyrights, so I guess, on the them colors. Too. For yeah. example, this has three colors, so it right. wasn't that expensive. Up right. to 10 or 14 colors, right. each color cost more money. So right. if you had a print that had 15 or 20 colors, it was right. the most expensive print in Paris. Now, it, they, it's, it's the same for the right. two print. They're, there's a new machine that came out that makes it the same. So in China, they make the prints, they just copy them. It doesn't right. matter how many colors you have. Right. That's how the modern world has changed. So right. the avatar yes. idea that we will have that one day, Yes. nobody could ever imagine 14 prints would be right. the same price as one color. Right. So. It, 14 colors, one color, everything will change in the next 10 to 15 years and we have no clue how we'll dress or how we'll shop because right. we're in such a fast pace of changing. Right. And for someone who's in the business, mm -hmm. you don't go, I loved it when it was there. You just move on. You move you on. You just move, move on, on. Yes. follow the new things. So that happened with me okay. when I had the Bergdorf Boutique for 55 years okay. and I would average 300000 350 330 350 a month. Bergdorf would sell that much of my family. 250,000. 350. 350. That Bergdorf would sell 350. Wow. I would also sell Neiman's. Yes. But my own Bergdorf with 350 Your a shop. month. That's amazing. And so. all of a sudden we had the recession and it goes to 80. Right. That was in the 80s, right? No, no. The recession was 2008. That one that was the second one. We that was the second one. Wasn't affected I was by affected the by one. the first one. That's why I went into bridal instead of couture. Mm -hmm. So then the second one affected everybody, but it hit the fashion industry almost a year before everybody yes. else got hit. For some reason, it was like 2007, because I was teaching at the university at that point. And that's when they were buckling down too. And, and some of the fashion schools were closing mm -hmm. one after another. Very few fashion schools even around. We didn't get affected in Bergdorf Couture. Okay. I'm on the fourth floor of Couture okay. until 2008. Okay. It, October. Okay. I'll remember the date because all my life I'm always selling 200,000 to 300,000. I've never had that. In the right. other recessions, Amazing. nothing ever stopped me. No. Okay. All of a sudden, boom. Yeah. 80,000. Oh my God. So I waited a year. Wow. And after that year, that's when I started to do, I said, I'll do television. Okay. because I had to find a new career because I'm not going to stay in Bergdorf and fly in from Paris and have okay. one lady to meet one lady. Okay. I normally met eight, seven or eight. Right. So I went back and uh, how did you get to uh, move on in the television? How did you get into the HSN? I dressed everybody. Okay. So I dressed the woman who, who was the CEO of HSN. Okay, okay. So then <laughs> I they did her wedding dress. Okay. I did her bar mitzvah, her daughter dress. Okay. And the people who on QVC the okay. person who started cable television, okay. Mr. Magnus, okay. I dressed Mrs. Magnus. Wow. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. So I want to go back a little bit to the pretty woman dress because I want to make sure everybody understands this. When you when you're a fashion designer, Vicky Till will be the first one to tell you you're going to be copied. Oh boy. And how do you deal with that? And so, you know, explain how the pretty woman dress evolved yes. and how it started. And um, when I started my business, Elizabeth, in uh, 1968, yeah. we then went into our first store in uh, Henry Bendel in 1972. So it was okay. four years, I was still doing costumes for movies, and by uh, the year of um, 72, uh -huh. I went into Henry Bendel. Okay. Then I went into Bergdorf in 82. Okay. And then uh, about 77, 1977, I dressed all of the stars for the Oscars with a store called Giorgio uh -huh. and the Cannes Film Festival. Sure. I did the Cannes Film Festival. Okay. At the Cannes Film Festival, a girl came at 17 and she wanted to me to create a gown for her. And so she was now going to be honored at the Cam Film Festival as the future superstar. Okay. I did her dress and um, 
She wore it in lime green, strapless and short. Fred Heyman from Giorgio saw it and he ordered it in long in 1979 to 80. So it's now long and in lime green, white, red, black. And then 1985, he ordered it in red with draped sleeves. So the same dress now has gone from 1977. Wow. Never stopped selling it. Just sell it wow. over and Is over. Is it still selling? Of course, it's still selling. It's the wow. longest selling dress in the history of selling Amazing. dresses. 1970. Crazy. <laughs> 1985. Yeah. It's now in the window of Giorgio's. And by 1988 or 89, they're uh -huh. making a movie called Pretty Woman and they buy it for the movie. Okay. They make it for Julia Roberts and they copy it in the movie and they make when, when you shoot a movie, you're going to have four sam for examples, maybe right. three. If it's a one shot, maybe two. God right. forbid coffee spills on it. You're not going to have right. a dress in the movie with one, ever. Right. You have to always have two. Okay. God forbid something happens to yes. the dress and you're shooting the movie. You can't lose the seconds. So you always have two of everything sure. on a woman. So they got a couple of them and they made the copies and Julia Roberts wore it and it became the pretty woman dress. Before the dress was called Tory. It came out and it started getting publicity and we sold it more and more. Well, Fred Heyman started selling it. Neiman Marcus decided to sell it. That's wow. 1990. That's when the movie came out. Yeah. It's still selling. Amazing. Mrs. Shafiroff just got it the other day. Wow. So that's the longest selling dress and Bergdorf's, it's 32 straight years it's been selling the one dress. And a lot of famous people have ordered Everybody it as well. Everybody has it. Yes, Everybody has yes. it. So Oprah's Almost. had it, Jill Biden. Every, Mrs. Right. Jill Biden, Biden wore it for the yeah. inaugural ball um, yeah. three or four years ago, five years ago, when she uh -huh. was inaugurated as the vice president's wife. Yeah. And it'll be selling when I'm dead. And yeah. it's forever. It's probably the most perfect long dress in the history of, of long dresses. Why? Because... Yeah. It's shaped like this, and it gives you a great figure. What's inside it? In France, we have a 24 bone corset. Mm -hmm. Our bones in France are not made out of plastic like they are in America. The corsetry in Amazing. France is our, okay. fa our fame. They're mm -hmm. out of metal, and we can bend them. So we're gonna take the pretty woman corset, and we're gonna turn it like that for the bust. So you can right. turn it here. Yes. Then you're gonna push it in, and it's gonna go in here. Right. So it's gonna go in here, down to the waist, and then you're gonna push it out. So it's gonna shape like that, the bone. Right. The bones here are going to be shaped, the bones on the side are going to be shaped to go in, and the bones on the back are going to be shaped to go okay. in. Yes. When you put that on, you zip it up, all those bones, 24 bones, and they're side by side. Yes. In France corsetry, you're going to put your two bones here, two, they're yes. a bone and a bone side by side, right. sewn in into right. the seam. Yeah. It costs a lot. Right. It costs a lot to have a sewer do that. Right. The sewer who does that is still working. I was She's never stopped specific working. corset makers to do this kind of thing because I know that yes. when I was doing it in Miami and I had corsets for my designs, yes. I brought in specific corset makers who did nothing but corsets. Yes, but you used the plastic bone. We did use the plastic bone. We did not have the metal. Well, we, we, did, we did mold it as much a as we bit. could. And you can't really But not the like metal. metal. It's amazing. No, we have yes. the metal bone and they're yes. not cheap. They're very no. expensive. But the right. corsetry and the girls who study that are sewers, right? But they know that part of their job working for me, and so that was what I had that right. other people didn't have. Now, the other thing I have is yeah. if you look at, I was side by side with Oscar de la Renta for many years, sure, and yeah. he had day wear and mm -hmm. cocktail and evening, and I basically yeah. do evening cocktail yeah. and evening, right. no, no day wear. So I had yeah. the biggest day evening gown business in Bergdorf. Yeah. His corset, his bone, if you are a size 10. The depth of his of his uh, the corset, because yeah. he's a boy, you know, right, is half the size of the depth of mine. So this, what's the secret of the Vicky Teal? You believe I, in the woman's body. I have the curve in <laughs> yes. the bust of a woman, a natural woman's body, and nobody. The, the designers, the, all the men designers, don't do that. Right. They make a flat chest. Right. right. And at a, you'd say 20 to 30 percent of the women have flat chested. 80 percent of the women have a full bust and they're not going to zip up into an Oscar. The breast right. is going to pop out. Exactly. So sadly, I mean, yeah. well, happily for me, I didn't have to worry about competing because anybody who had a full bust would buy my dresses. Amazing. There you go. Right. So that's that's bravo because that <laughs> that dress is shows you um, how the history of fashion is relevant even today. And and one of the very main questions I wanted to ask is. If you were starting out today, would you do it 
And how would you go about Same thing. Really? Same thing. You wouldn't yeah. change a thing? No, nothing. No, okay. actually I could still go on, but I'm just tired. I've been, okay. I've been, uh, Neiman sent me to 21 cities yeah. for 25 years. Okay. Then I ended up the last 10 years to 11 cities. Okay. I'm the only designer that did that. The other okay. designers sent a rep. Wow. I didn't, nobody sent the designer. No wow. designer wanted to work that hard. Right. So right. I'm Vicky, I'm working all that hard. So right. I'll do it again and again. Yeah. If you're not a hard worker, don't do it. Do not do this job. Right, right. The business is, is brutal. At Parsons, we had a theme, we had to write a theme paper and I chose mm -hmm. to write about Coco. I had studied her and uh, how she came from such a poverty-stricken background and how she mm -hmm. had invented so many things. She invented sportswear, basically. Right. So how, mm -hmm. you know, just the idea of Coco. And when I partnered with Elizabeth and I talked about a Coco Chanel, she said, oh, I know I get gowns from her from time to time. And she meets me in the dressing room. Oh and, my goodness. Um, I said, oh, Elizabeth, I could ever meet Coco. Yeah. Coco was about to die. It was the year before her death. Wow. She died, I think it was 71, so it was be 1970. Okay. And Elizabeth, surprise, guess what? I said, what? Dinner with Coco. I was like, oh my God, That's dinner crazy. with Coco. She'd oh arranged for me to have dinner with Coco. Wow. I had the afternoon, and so I went to this antique fabric store that Carl and I fought over fabrics. Okay. Carl collects antique fabrics like I do. Yeah. And I bought a piece of fabric that was three yards wide, three yards, and it was a piece of silver lace I'll show with a picture birds of embroidered yes. on yeah. it and pearl faces mm -hmm. and ruby eyes. And it was see-through, see-through lace, an art deco silver lace pattern, all silver. Oh. Yeah. And so I quickly got it home, cut, 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 sewed up here, sewed the back center seam, and put mm -hmm. it on over a uh, pantyhose uh -huh. and no bra. I go to the dinner, and Coco is seated at a banquette the banquette is a couch that curves like that. Uh -huh. And with Elizabeth, I arrive, and they're sitting there, and Coco is 80 something. Okay. She's got her hat on with all kind of flowers. She's got thousands of chains of pearls. You know, she wow. gets older, the more jewelry. More pearls jewelry. in here. Yeah. <laughs> her Chanel suit and white is black trim. And she's got a giant flower here, the flower oh. in her Chanel hat, and then the flower here in her bag. Uh, she was so dolled up, and she's sitting oh. in the center, and I walk over to her, and she, me, uh, Elizabeth says, this is Vicki, uh, she's so, my partner, she wants to meet you so much, and she looks at me and she says, qu'est-ce que vous êtes? Une femme ou un enfant? What are you, a woman or a child? <laughs> and I yeah. said, no, I'm you but young. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you but young. Yeah. Wouldn't dare say that, but you are amazing. <laughs> you but young, yeah. and instead of Coco, who is just like Elizabeth, this secure thing of her, it's Coco. Mm -hmm. She looks at me and she goes, oh, and she grabs me and she hugs me. And she loved me. She just loved that I talked to her like that. She loved it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we sat down and she, after the dinner, we've spent two hours together. At the Amazing. end, she takes our hand and she goes to Elizabeth and she rubs her hand like this. And she goes like this and she yeah. says, mon chéri. And I had to translate them. Yeah you are going to be making a perfume for me. You promise. Elizabeth's like that. For you, you were overwhelmed, for, for, right? For me. And yeah. Elizabeth says, but I don't know. I mean, I, I'm a movie star. We don't do that. <laughs> and she says, a movie star is not forever. Right. She's basically saying when you're dead, right. you're gonna, your perfume's going to sell. Sell, exactly. And so yes. she did the same with me. Fashion designer's not forever. So. Yes. That was the end of the evening. At the very end, we say goodbye and we hug her yes. and we go off. And for about 10 years, we discuss it and discuss it. Oh, no. Yeah. And we get people and we find juices that we're going to try. And we both made a perfume. Today, AIDS in Africa is entirely supported by Elizabeth Taylor, $100 million a year. Wow. The She's White supported. Diamonds one? White Diamonds. Wow. Number one yeah. selling perfume on planet. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's to be this long in the career and to still be celebrated and to keep going into different avenues and to, to just evolve and evolve. It's just that you're still working. You're still working hard. Oh yeah, until so I dropped dead. Right. Just so pleased that you were able to do this with me and that you were so generous to do this with me. And I hope that um, my viewers are going to be just 
blown away by this information and I thank you so much for watching um, give me comments in the in the comments below to let me know what you think of this if you want to see more of these type of high-level interviews um, with designers and artists and all of that because that's where I'm going with this so thank you guys for watching give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't subscribed I'll see you next time thank you bye bye Yeah, we'll the Frenchies, oh, the three of us. Okay. So you don't have the right pen. Okay. I don't. Okay. It's okay. But I, have I just this, I, I can draw what I draw. Okay. I'm gonna. We're having pen. this on. Film. See, when the women come to the Burkdorf dressing room, I draw. I drew them. You got a nice okay. big eye. So that I would, they would get the sketch in their in my yeah. in the dress, and that helped too. I know. I see that you have the personality of each individual with your sketches. It's mm -hmm. so amazing. Do you like my dress? It was for you. <laughs> I'm still trying to get the, the, the look, the style. Oh, love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Look at that, guys. Woohoo.